To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions, episode 19, The Death of Abraham. Everybody dies, even a man chosen by God. Abraham's clan deity, Yahweh, rewarded him for his loyalty with a trueborn son from his elderly wife Sarah and gave him a peaceful death without want and in old age. So here we are at the death of the first Hebrew patriarch, one of the top five most important biblical characters. We had a lot of discussions in past episodes about Avraham and his story, and in this episode we want to talk about his last days and give him a proper send-off, rife with historical, social, and literary context, to close the chapter on our main man, Avraham, son of Terach, husband of Sarah, and father to a legitimate son, Yitzchak, and several bastards born out of wedlock. May Avraham rest in peace in the tomb of the patriarchs in Hebron. Abraham, final chapter, coming up. Hi, Omri. Hi. I want to contest. <laughs> I know what you want to, to protest. contest. To protest. We'll, yeah. your, your, your protest will be noted, and then we'll go on with the episode. Please, protest. I, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure that uh, Abraham's offspring, uh, not from Sarah, are considered bastards. Okay. A bastard is a child not born out of wedlock, rather a child that was born out of adultery. Protest noted. Can we go on? Please. Thank you. Okay. So let's go through the final lines about Avraham. Vayiten Avraham et kol asher lo leitzchak giveth Abraham gave all that he had to Yitzchak ulevne apil agishim asher leavraham natan Avraham atanot and to the sons of the concubines he gave gifts and he sent them away and left Yitzchak his son as he was alive so all the other contenders to the yeah, to the not to the throne, to the but the to, to the inheritance. Yeah. He sent them all away yeah. with gifts. He sent them east, Kedem, El Eretz Kedem. Mm-hmm. He sent them back east. And then he lived to be 175 year, years old. Died. It's like tripping and falling. So like tripping is to falling what Igva is mm. to dying. Nice. Abraham in... Besevatova, we still use it in like seva, sear seva is like uh, white, white hair, hair yeah, gray old hair. hair, gray hair. Not that we would know anything about it. <laughs> and old and full, like that he ate. Not, yeah. Like it's a different word to be full of food than full yeah. of something else. So this is just like it's really nice, like it's comforting. I think it's something uh, very human across ages. To if you ask anybody the very difficult question that most people don't want to be asked, how would you like to die? Because nobody wants to think about it. Most people, when they will think about it more than a minute, they will say, "Yeah, I want to die in my bed, full with the yeah. after a good meal in yeah. my uh, my gray gray haired yes. uh, oldness." And with just one of my sons and all the others uh, sent no, no, away. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the one thing that is uh, that's changed. It's like the best scenario yes. of your uh, yes. of your uh, of your hero is yes. uh, you, who got honored by God is to yes. die in and old this age. This was part of the deal. This is something that God added to the deal that you will die uh, in, in old, old age. age and happy. And here the deal has been. Completed, and then he asef elamav gathered to his, uh, gathered to his people. It's also nice. And then the only one that stays the, that, that stays there, outside of uh, Yitzchak, is Ishmael. And then Ishmael and Yitzchak buried him in the cave of the patriarchs, in the field of Ophran, son of Chazor, the Hittite, that is uh, next to Mimra. Mm. This is the legalese. Just yeah. you have to know exactly. This is like when they bought the uh, when they had the land deal. It was yeah. very very specific. Chatzor is way north. Chatzor is way way north, north to the Marat Yeah, Chatzor is is closer to Turkey. Closer to Lebanon more than the yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Uh, and it was after the death of Abraham, and God blessed Elohim, not Yahweh. God blessed Yitzchak, his son. And Yitzchak went back to the 
to the well, <laughs> to one of the wells, because wells are important yeah. in this time, in this region. Especially for pastoralist uh, people. Yeah, for pastoralists. Yeah. So after his d- father died, buried him, goes back to a well. Just this is here in the text. Yeah. We can contemplate yeah. why this is important. This was important for them to state where he went after that. Yeah. Out of all the options. He possible. doesn't go back to his castle. He doesn't go back to his castle. Doesn't go back and cry. Doesn't go for, t- for a pilgrimage. Yeah. Goes to the well. So I have a thought why a well. Maybe this is a custom that after you bury someone, you go to a well. Yeah, it could be. Maybe. It's a stretch. After a death, you go to a place that signifies life. A well. Water. Or a place to cry and, uh, and drown your tears. Or, Omri, mm-hmm. are you sitting down? When you go today to a Jewish cemetery, you pay your respects on your way out. What do you do? You wash your hands. <laughs> You wash your hands. You have this, you have a place with buckets. We have, you, have, you have faucets, but you don't use the faucets to wash your hands. You put money in sort of bucket like you would uh, with a well, and you wash your hands. You have that spot at the entrance slash exit of every cemetery. And after you either bury your dead or visit your dead, you go out, you have to wash your hands. Yeah. Maybe. There's not even a description of a uh, mourning ritual. Mm. Mourning rituals were common in the ancient world. Not even rituals, like the, the way that they reacted sorrowly upon a loss, you know, like uh, tearing down their clothes, tearing their hair. There's not even a description of this here. And then, by, by the way, this is, uh, this is uh, just like a half of the entire chapter. Then it's... Lineages and lineages, lineages, yeah, yeah. lineages, and all these lineages, like all the peoples and the nations and the cultures around them that they need to, okay, let's put yeah. in these people also by Ishmael, by, but we'll talk about that in the uh, next time. Now we want to look at Abraham's story in its totality, right? We went through story by story. That's a lot of chapters. So maybe first thing to talk about, like, Uh, to what demographic does Abraham belong in this Mesopotamian, Levantian region? The myth surrounding Abraham was probably something that was shared by a lot of nations and peoples and city-states and traditions that were not necessarily Yahweh's uh, traditions. If we take a look at Abraham's character, he's probably a well-known father figure character for many mm-hmm. nations. But uh, the first theme that appears in his story is the fact that he needs to leave his home yes. to go to another yes. place. Yeah. I won't say a uh, promised land. That's a little bit anach- anachronistic, anachronistic, but technically a promised land. Not yes, a promised land. <laughs> yeah, not a promised land in the fact that it's much better than the place that you live now and y- you are in a dire situation and you need to go to some safe haven, yes, no. a.k.a. a promised land. No, it's a promised land because it was promised. It was <laughs> <laughs> yes, literally. This yeah. is like beca- okay, so this is another theme so that, that, that connects to the first one. So Abraham is a, a, a pastoralist, a nomadic pastoralist. Yeah. He moves around. When he has to leave his house, he's not taking, it's, you know, like uh, whatever, immigrants to America, just the, yeah. the shirts on their backs. Yeah. No, he takes his entire house with him. Yeah. And his entire posse and family and slaves and cattle. So Abraham is a, a well-known father figure of many Asemitic people who lives in the area, but he represents, if you talk about a demographic, it's probably the demographics of the more pastoralist, mm-hmm. more Bedouin. M- and he doesn't have a palace, he doesn't have mm. a crown, and he doesn't have armies. He doesn't have a court. Yeah. What does he have? Respect. Yeah. And deals. He's making deals. So he doesn't come from the city. Jesus of Nazareth, Muhammad, Mecca. This religion, its perspective is Abraham, he's the first Hebrew, and he's not from Jerusalem. He's not even from here. He comes from two cities that historically are known to be like proto-monotheistic. 
before the rest of the region, uh, Haran mm-hmm. and uh, Ur-Kasdim. Mm-hmm. They had uh, the moon god Sin. Yeah. And those are the two cities mentioned in Abraham's, like, w- where he comes from and where he goes through. So this doesn't seem like a coincidence that they say our first man didn't come from here. He went through these two cities that are famous for yeah. worshiping one god over the others. And then he came here yeah. with his god from there. Maybe it uh, holds some kind of a distant, distant, distant memory of the <coughs> migration of the Semitic people. A distant memory of the Semitic people arriving in the area. Maybe yes. there's tiny enclaves or some remnants of barbarians, let's say, that speak some kind of an old language that is non-Semitic. Not in the time of the writings, but maybe the time of the storytellings. And this is also a pro- <laughs> also something that it needs to be mentioned about the timing and the dating. Okay. It, we can never know. We know that just by looking at it, that there are several versions, layers, r- layers and writing styles. We can clearly see the different sources because there's a different writing style, different words used, mm-hmm. different name of the god, of the deity. Different parts of evolution of language. The fact that the text is written and probably was written by a very few elite that could write and read, unlike 99% of the uh, population, then we can never really date when they, this, these stories were told. The first version could be, have been told, and because it's like a very minor story that is easily remembered, it could have been passed without mm. major interferences and major changes, like 200 years, 300 years. Are you talking about Abraham? The Abraham stories, when they were told, because th- when they were written, yes, they were written by an existing elite or yes. some kind of a person or a yes. organization with material possessions. Yes. And, and that can be like 900 BCE, that can be 700 BCE, some can be 600 BCE, when they were written, put on, yes. on squir- squirrels physically. Squirrels. When they were told, yes. we can only guess. Yes, and we can see that throughout history. A more recent example, is uh, stories by the Green Brothers. Mm-hmm. These uh, are also stories that have been floating around throughout that cultural space, that region of uh, France, that region of Germany, all kinds of different uh, Germanic, uh, G- German kingdoms, not Germanic, and then put on paper at a specific time that you know by specific people, and now these stories are remembered in this way. Yeah. While... You have other sources that show earlier versions less developed or just yeah. different of these same stories. And we also saw that uh, in Islam, in the Quran. Yeah, we can see it uh, also in Christianity. Uh, no, that's the real religion. True, one true religion. The main character is, G- is Jesus. And you have three and four different versions and sources of his main life. The stories were put into writing 60 years or 50 years after the fact. But... And they were told in the same book, and that's fine. Yeah. This tells us a lot. Yeah. It tells us a lot about the capacity of the human brain to, uh, to make a, a mumbled or contradicting, sto- contradicting story into a cohesive narrative. Yeah, and also the fact that for them it's just not contradicting. It's not what they were trying to do. They're not trying to prove a historical fact. Yeah, and it can well may be that Jesus, Yeshua, which is a uh, common, not that uh, non-common name in uh, Palestine of uh, zero uh, BC, <laughs> <laughs> of one BC, uh, one AD. Uh, mm. It can well may be that uh, there were either a couple of Jesuses, or Jesus is a well-known name, and Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeah. So the three different versions are actually versions of a story that people told about Yeshu, a Yeshu, and 60 years when they were put into writing, it became only one Yeshu. Mm. It can be the same here with Abraham. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.